Pricing a house appropriately takes a little bit of time and some research because you have to take a look at the home value and then take a look at what a buyer is actually willing to pay considering what you have going on at your current house. So the best way to do it is to take a look at current sales. Now market changes every day. Right now we're in a very fluid market. I mean, it's up and down like crazy um, with interest rates having increased recently. Um, if you price anything using a comp before October of last year of 2023, then <laughs> that's old news. You cannot do it. The market completely changed in October and we can only look at comps from then to current. So um, you just have to know that by knowing the market. If you are taking a look at anything from 20 2022, um, it, it's not going to work, right? Today is different. This market is different. So you need to take a look at the most current sales first. And I like to narrow down to see what price per square foot something has recently sold for um, that's nearby. And it's very important to keep in mind that you have to look at like properties. If you've got a split foyer, you can only look at a split foyer to get that kind of data. Uh, you cannot um, uh, use a comparative that would have a slab house or a basement house. It just doesn't work. Um, most people will completely overprice a split foyer because they just um, uh, don't know how to price it appropriately. So um, don't want you to fall into that that category, of course. So the next thing I look at is what is on the market now. If I have a certain amount of money as a buyer, what can I buy? If I can buy 20 houses in a certain price range, then how do I need to price mine to be competitive? Um, so I start taking a look at that because when a buyer has more options, you're going to get less money for your house. Um, when a buyer has very few options, like we've seen over the past couple of years, inventory has been way low, that pushes the prices up. Um, this past weekend, uh, I showed a couple from Dallas and I showed them seven houses. The, the key to that sentence is there were seven houses for me to show. That has not been the case in a couple of years. So that means that you know, we're probably going to go down a little bit on pricing in that price range. It was right underneath the $400,000 mark. Here's what's interesting though. There were two offers on it, so I had to compete and that pushed it back up. <laughs> so <laughs> this is really important when you're pricing your house appropriately to know these kind of things. What kind of house can I buy, right, for the money? Um, how do I set myself apart being competitive? If I need updates and upgrades and there are other houses out there that have the updates and upgrades, then my price needs to be a little bit lower to make up for that. Unless I'm in a fabulous location that people will scratch their eyes out to get. <laughs> And there are those cases, but your um, real estate agent who works hard for you will end up telling you if you've got that location or not. So don't just think that you've got it. You need some confirmation because everybody thinks their house is the best. What you really need to know when you're pricing your house appropriately also is that buyers are very savvy. They are, they become experts at the market and I am not kidding. That's not me being sarcastic in any way. I'm serious. When uh, a buyer starts looking for a house, just think about when you're looking for a house, you're going to be scanning everything that is available surrounding the areas, right? That you're interested in. They can see what's going under contract they can see how quickly they will see if a house stays on the market for a certain amount of time they're very good at pricing that's why we can't just throw out a random number and just hope you get it it's got to make sense to a very well educated buyer